Allah is great. Allah is great. Allah is great. Allah is great. We give all thanks and praise to Allah, the one who is the Lord of the entire universe. We give all praise to Him by whose favors good deeds are completed. We are reminded of the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to us all. Allah is great and all praise belongs to Him alone. All praise belongs to He who has made us this day from amongst the believers. All praise belongs to He who has granted us food from His provisions. All praise belongs to He who has granted us guidance when so many are misguided. Verily, we are witnessing another day of celebration, a day of Eid. A day for us to remember Allah, to praise Him, and to glorify Him. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said, and we have given the appointed days for you to glorify Allah for the guidance that He has granted you and in order that you might be amongst those who are grateful. Dear servants of Allah, know that verily in Islam the definition of the Eid goes beyond just celebration alone but it is seen as a day of worship as well. For in our celebrations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made it as a form of not only showing joy, of not only making the faces radiant. The faces are radiant out of the joy of knowing Allah and worshipping Him. Which is why this day is a day that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has set aside for us to remember Him, to glorify Him, and to praise Him for the blessings that He has bestowed upon us, for guiding us, for removing us from a state of weakness and bringing us strength. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely is the one who grants strength to whomever He wills. As He says in the Noble Quran, And verily I have written for myself and my messengers, Victory, verily Allah is the one that is with strength and the Almighty. And regarding wealth, Allah is the one who grants it. As he says, O mankind, verily you are all poor in the sight of Allah, and Allah is the one who is the enricher and the one who is praiseworthy. Regarding might, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, that say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, verily Allah is the king of all kingdoms, Malik al-Mulk. He grants it to whomever he wills, and he withholds it from whomever he wills. And he honors whomever he wills, and he allows humiliation to befall whomever he wills. In his hands is all good, and verily over everything he has power. Allah has made it that in Islam, the celebrations we experience, they follow one another and they come after acts of worship. For us to understand and even remember how much this acts or these Eids are attached to worship. The first is the Eid al-Fitr, which is observed after the blessed month of Ramadan, fasting of Ramadan. And now we have the Eid al-Adha, which is a symbolism of the Hajj, which are both pillars of Islam. For the one who is observing the Eid on this day, is surely observing it in line with that which is pleasing to his Lord, which shows obedience to his Lord, which shows that he is seeking closeness to his Lord. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to turn to Him in this period, seeking for forgiveness from Him, spending of our wealth in charity, either at night or in the daytime, and remembering Him as much as we can, especially for those who are granted the favor to visit His honored house, 
Baytul Atiq, the ancient house, and to go around it in Tawaf. Islam has come as a faith, as a deen, to unite the ummah, to unite the nation. And for this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, and verily your ummah is but one ummah, and I am your Lord, so be mindful. Islam unites, and so why is it today that we choose disunity over unity? Islam grants us honor. Why have we chosen to follow the path of humiliation? Islam enriches, and the wealth that Islam grants is beyond the wealth of this world alone. Why have we chosen other than this? Islam gives guidance. Why have we chosen other than the path of Allah and the path of guidance? Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Noble Quran, and verily how will you disbelieve when you have been shown or been or the verses of your Lord has been recited upon you while you are in the midst of the messenger himself and know that whoever holds on to Allah then verily they have held on to that guidance of the straight path and they will never be misguided. May Allah count us all from amongst those who are guided. Dear brothers and sisters or honored believers amongst the acts that we note in this period for those performing the Hajj giving the opportunity to visit the noble house of Allah they will find themselves in a place of ease and a place of security and peace and for the one who is granted the honor to either touch the stone or pray in the area of the maqam, that's maqam Ibrahim, or perform the sa'i just as was performed by our mother Hajar, or to perform the slaughter or the sacrifice as was done by Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, or the obedience of the son of Nabi Ibrahim, Ismail alayhi salatu wasalam, or to perform the tawaf just as our noble prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam had performed it. These are all but cases of honor before us that increases our faith in our Lord, that grants us ease and goodness, and that also elevates our status. One of the lessons or the great lessons that we must remember of the Eid, especially Eid al-Adha, of this day, this particular Eid, is that there was a great sacrifice between Nabi Ibrahim, Prophet Ibrahim, and his son Ismail. When Allah Most High had given the command for the sacrifice to be made, and Nabi Ibrahim honored that command from his Lord, obeyed him, and subsequently it was replaced, that sacrifice was replaced by an animal that had roamed in the paradise for years. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to remember, most especially, the reward for those who are righteous and pious. When Nabi Ibrahim, when Nabi Ibrahim chose not to follow the path of those whom he saw that were on the wrong even though they outnumbered him. Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu wasalam, said that he would not follow them, for verily he had noted that they were from amongst those who were misguided. For this Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Nabi Ibrahim mentioned, and verily I will follow the path of my Lord, the path of guidance, and I will call on to him and seek that he makes me from amongst those who are righteous. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and through this we gave him the glad tidings of a child that will be forbearing of him. Because of his faith and because of choosing the path of Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala honored his ranks and raised him and made him such a great example to the entire mankind. 
The one who follows the path to Allah, Allah will surely ease his path to him and ease his path to paradise and elevate his status as well. As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, As Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions about raising the one who remembers and who strives in the path of Allah, just as Nabi Ibrahim alayhi salatu was salam did, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and verily, we remind in the book of Ibrahim, he was amongst those who were truthful and also a prophet. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him, and subsequently in the next verse, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala also mentions Nabi Ismail, the son of Nabi Ibrahim. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala mentions him as well. And verily in the book, we have also mentioned Ismail. Innahu kana sadiq al wa'd. He was from amongst those who kept their promises. And he was a messenger and a prophet. For you to obey Allah and to follow in his path, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala raises your ranks. Not just in this life, but in the hereafter as was done with Nabi Ibrahim, where his ranks was raised by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And not only was his ranks raised in the status that he got, but he sought for Allah to also guide his progeny. And through that, the ranks of his progeny was also raised as well. Right down to his final descendant, the final messenger, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. May the peace and blessings of Allah be upon him. Another great lesson we must remember, aside from the sacrifice that Nabi Ibrahim made in order to obey Allah, is also the sacrifice that Nabi Ismail made as well in following the command that was given to him. When his father, Ibrahim والسلام, said to him, O oh my son, verily I have seen in a dream that I offered you as a sacrifice. Tell me, what do you see of this? At this, the son of Nabi Ibrahim responded by saying, O oh my father, do as you have been commanded. Verily, you will find me from amongst those who are patient. For this reason, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made this day a day of sacrifice for us to remember this particular incident of how the obedience that they both exhibited in following the command, even though they loved one another. A father would love his child with the love that Allah has granted him. And the child will equally feel the same. But no matter how strong that love is, the love for Allah supersedes all of that. And they exhibited this with true patience. And because of this, Allah elevated them. And today we are following in this practice, in this tradition, as has been passed down generation to generation. O oh, honored brothers and sisters, in our joy and in celebrating today, again, remembrance of Allah and obedience to Allah must be paramount. We must celebrate in a way that earns us the pleasure of our Lord and in a way that brings us closer to him, that shows that we are grateful for the blessings he has bestowed upon us by not doing that which goes beyond what is required. We give glad tidings to the youth, or glad tidings to the youth who are immersed in the worship of Allah, and glad tidings to those whom when they remember Allah, Tears flow down their eyes, out of awe and out of fear and also out of seeking the mercy of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And glad tidings to she or to the female who wears or adorns her hijab. She puts it on in pride and says, O oh Allah, I do this in obedience to you. Glad tidings to the wife who obeys her husband 
who is also worthy of that obedience. It is not enough to say that the woman must be obedient alone, but to also call on us, the men, to earn that obedience by also being truthful and honoring and respecting our wives. And glad tidings to the one who fasts in this month, the days of Dhul Hijjah, and the one who observes the five obligatory prayers, and the one who feeds those who are not able to feed themselves, especially in our time today, where there is so much hunger and poverty in our land. We urge everyone to make the effort to feed those whom you can, from those who are closest to you to those who are furthest. And that's what this day also connotes as well, a day of charity where you remember those who are needy, to take out of that which you slaughter and to distribute to the needy a portion, just as you keep a portion to yourself and a portion to be given as gifts, as has been stated by the scholars. And also glad tidings to those who cater to the orphans and to those who keep the ties of kingship. Preserve, O oh brothers and sisters, and O oh Muslims, preserve your relationship with Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala by obeying His commands, by obeying that which He has made obligatory upon you, by being mindful of His hudud, His rulings, or His limits that He has set, and also upholding the covenant you have made with Him, which is a covenant to worship none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And when you do this, know that He will surely preserve you and preserve your faith, preserve your wealth, and preserve yourselves. In turning back to Allah, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will surely elevate our status once more. No doubt today we are faced with a plethora of problems in the Muslim world in general and in our nation in particular. We need to turn back to Allah now more than ever. We need to seek for Allah's help now more than ever. We need to ask for His guidance now more than ever. As we see that in different parts of this nation, whether it's the issues of security, or as I mentioned, the issues of the economy and poverty, it is only by turning back to Allah that we will surely find ourselves coming out of the state of weakness and gaining strength, coming out of the state of poverty, poverty and gaining wealth, coming out of the state of fear and gaining security, and finding that those issues that are difficult for us will be made easy. Because in all of this, we remember none but Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. A well-known narration from the moon has mentioned that the path to Jannah involves five different components that everyone must exhibit to gain entrance to Jannah. The first of them is perseverance. Persevering during the times of difficulty. The second is striving for the sake of Allah and striving in the path of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The, th the third is being mindful of Allah, returning to Him, remembering Him in difficulty. The fourth is carrying out a reckoning on yourself, a reckoning that you will surely stand before your Maker. And so, how is your affair before you now, before you meet with your Maker or with our Maker? And the final and the most important, preparing for death. Preparing for death. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive all those who have gone before us. Preparing for death and just to expantiate on this. Recently, a brother whom is well known to a lot of us returned to Allah. But I want everyone to not remember this individual or the positions he held. 
but remember the affairs that happened before his demise. From the mornings before, from the statements he, has give, he had given, and so many seeing him, and I know we know whom I am referring to, he had been received and given honors and was set to retire. In fact, he had retired, done with the work that he was ordered to do. But what was the greatest retirement that was waiting for him? Everything was done. Everyone had seen him and praised him and all of that had happened to him. But as Allah had written, and when Allah calls you, la yasta'akhiruna sa'a wa la yasta'akhdim. Not one second is added or a minute is added nor decreased. By the night of that very day, the news had broken that this person had returned to Allah. There was no time for him to say, let me arrange my affairs. There was no time for him to say, oh, now I am retired. Let me go back and focus on Allah. A lot of people do that a lot of times where we say, oh, we have this, we have that at a later time. I will repent to Allah. Oh, when I'm done with my work, I will turn to Allah. I am not saying this servant of Allah had done it this way, but I want us all to take a lesson from his life because it is said that death is enough for us as an admonition. Umar bin Khattab, radiallahu anhu, it was said that he had a ring on his finger and on that ring it was written, Kafa bil wa'idhan ya Umar. Death is enough for you as an admonition, O Umar. So how do you prepare for death? How many of us here have heard of someone that we saw a few moments ago and a few moments later you hear the person has returned to Allah? And it is almost unbelievable. You say, I can't believe it. This person was just here with me, but that is death. And that's why the real way you can prepare for your Jannah is to prepare for your death. Ask Allah at every point in time you wake, every position you occupy, Every day that you walk on the earth, how are you prepared for death? I know it is very difficult to do so. I know sometimes the affairs of this world is enough to make us forget. Everybody forgets, especially when things are difficult. And when I say things are difficult, maybe the fulus in the pocket is not coming very well. You are thinking of the ram you want to buy. You are thinking of the school fees you want to pay for. You are thinking of so many things, it makes you to forget. Everyone can do this. On a lighter note, you know, I heard of someone whom it was said was even leading the khutbah. And because of the difficulties, instead of praying or leading the Jumu'ah, and because of difficulties probably he was facing to pray two rakahs, he increased it and prayed three rakahs. Everyone forgets. But it's important that we all always remind one another of this day when it will come. Because that is all that will save us from the desires of the heart and to curtail those desires as well. Finally, dear brothers and sisters, ensure that you visit the orphans and visit the families and keep the ties of kingship. Be sincere in your activities. All honor your parents and know that verily this day of Eid is a day that we must all celebrate and remember those who are also in difficulty as well. May Allah accept from you and accept from me and us all. Taqabbal Allahu minna wa minkum Eidukum Mubarak. The Imam has arrived and we will now observe the Eid Salah. Um, after the Eid prayer, we are to wait and listen to the khutbah. And after the khutbah, the Imam would do the slaughtering before we now all depart the Eid prayer ground. May Allah accept it from you and us all.